Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon. So we will continue our discussion on a Fourier series. So we will discuss on properties and application of Fourier series. Okay, you can refer to in your lecture seven. So in this uh, lecture, we will uh, discuss on Gibb phenomenon. Mm, second is symmetrical and then respond of LTL system to a uh, predict signal uh, of course we rep uh, which we represent a uh, pre predict signal in uh, uh, in Fourier series form and then we have uh, power and possible theorem and then lastly we will uh, discuss on a uh, circuit application okay so in this video let's uh, take uh, discuss on uh, gate phenomenon if you read here so Gibbs phenomenon is uh, as more and more Fourier, Fourier component are, a are added into the equation so the sum uh, of it you will get a, a, a closer and closer representation of your original signal what it means if you consider uh, for your Fourier series uh, equation if you consider uh, more and more frequency component into your your equation so you will get a better and better representation of your original uh, signal okay that's it so so if we look over here this is uh, our uh, Fourier series uh, equation where over here we have uh, complex exponential form uh, and then over here we have trigonometric form and then uh, amplitude phase form okay so if you look over here so for complex exponential form so we consider uh, uh, neg from negative infinity to plus infinity number of uh, frequency component we said this one is infinite number of frequency component we consider in 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 this equation so same goes to this one where you consider over here for n equal to 1 to infinity meaning that we consider infinite number of frequency component in this equation for trigonometric Fourier series and then for amplitude phase Fourier series so over here we consider n equal to 1 to infinity so meaning that the same thing so we consider infinite number uh, of uh, Fourier series into the equation so these three equation over here will represent exactly the same uh, as our periodic signal so this one will give you the same uh, representation of our xt over here because we consider infinite number of frequency component okay so however it's not really practical okay in real world so we will have a limit uh, a, a limit number of frequency component that we can include into the equation okay for example if we take complex exponential over here so now we consider it's not n from negative infinity to infinity like this one okay so now we consider n equal to negative 100 from negative 100 to positive 100 over here uh, so we have uh, a limited number of frequency uh, component over here that we consider uh, so in this case okay we don't since we are it's not in infinite number of uh, frequency component so we have uh, just a close uh, approximation of our uh, predict signal xt over here so as we consider more number of uh, frequency component into the equation much much more closer to our predict signal over here so for example over here so if we reduce uh, the number of uh, component uh, by half okay over here by half so like n from negative uh, 50 to 50 so in this case okay so in this case mm, so uh, in this case okay so we can say that this one will give uh, a better representation of our signal xt when compared to uh, this one okay because of this one has more frequency component uh, has been considered uh, in compared to this one okay so it's, it is what it mean by uh, gate phenomenon as the increased number of uh, frequency component uh, into your equation 
so you will have a better uh, representation of your signal xd same goes to trigonometric Fourier series form and amplitude phase form okay so let's take a look uh, over here for amplitude phase form okay so this is your equation okay for amplitude phase form over here you consider infinite number of frequency since uh, over here n equal to 1 until infinite infinity so you have infinite number of frequency component uh, so for example if we limit uh, the the frequency uh, if we limit uh, this equation over here on on the right here which is this is our Fourier series equation if we just consider the dc component only like this one to represent our signal xd which is a rectangular signal over here so we just take the dc component of our uh, Fourier series equation uh, over here so so what will be the representation so we just have a dc dc uh, a straight line over here that represent our dc signal which is a naught over 2 over here okay this one a naught over 2 and then this one is the representation of our xd okay if you look over here so you have a straight line over here straight line graph but our predict signal is rectangular signal so it's totally totally different signal okay so so uh, this one is very bad representation so what we need to do to make it better representation so we need to add a frequency component uh, into uh, the uh, Fourier series equation instead of just just uh, taking the DC component so now we start taking uh, AC component into the consideration ok so first let's uh, include just one frequency component so that means uh, the AC part over here will be n equal to 1 until 1 so if you expand this so you will get this equation over here so you have n naught uh, over 2 which is our DC, co uh, DC component and then you add one frequency component over here which is this one okay just one frequency component here. so over here so you will have a better representation of our signal okay so if you draw over here of course you will have a, a cosine signal okay so if you draw over here a cosine signal so something like this one okay so now we have some sort of better representation of our signal compared to this one just this in component a straight line so now we have some sort of the same pattern with our our signal xd so if you look over here you have uh, the goes up okay same thing over here the signal goes up and then after that it goes down and then goes up again so this one is much better representation compared to just dc component so let's say if we add uh, uh, one more component into the equation now we have uh, n equal to 1 until n equal to 2 so if we expand this equation so we have two frequency component over here so you have one and then you have two over here frequency component so of course you will expect much much better representation compared to to the other two representation over here okay as we add more frequency component into the consideration so like over here we have this component and three frequency component so we have one and then two and then three over here okay so this one is this much better uh, uh, representation of our signal x xd as we add add uh, more frequency component for example over here until infinite number of frequency component so we have n equal to 1 until infinity so if we expand that we can have this one so when we sum this one okay since it's infinite number of uh, frequency component so we will have exact representation of our signal x x d okay so let's take a look on on this graph over here so for example over here okay i think i should put it down here so this is our uh, rectangular signal that you want to represent okay i think i just remove this one okay 
so this is the rectangular signal that you want to represent so this one we just consider the DC component of our Fourier series uh, equation so we just have a straight line over here uh, which is totally uh, wrong okay representation so now we start taking one consideration of fundamental AC, co AC component over here so as I said it's almost the same because it's follow the pattern of our uh, our our signal and then for this one is we add two AC component into the equation so we, we will have some of first two AC component so you will have this one okay it's become better and then if we add three more uh, AC a uh, three AC component into equation so we have some of first three AC component so now the representation is getting much better as we add more and more uh, 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 AC component into uh, the equation over here so we will have a better and better representation of our signal XT so for this case uh, the last one over here so we consider 11 num, uh, uh, 11 frequency component so if you look over here is is really much uh, closer to our our signal xt okay this is mean by git phenomenon where you uh, include more frequency component into your equation uh, so you will have a better representation of your signal xt okay so this the one okay for example you want to represent a rectangular signal over here so now this one only uh, one term okay or one frequency component this one if you have three frequency component this one if you have five frequency component and then this one if you have uh, 51 frequency component so you have uh, almost uh, exact uh, almost uh, uh, i think exactly uh, the same a representation to our signal uh, a predict signal over here okay so let's take a look uh, the simu uh, simulator over here so for example over here you have rectangular signal which is white in color over here okay now we don't have uh, any uh, component uh, included into the equation okay so if we add the first uh, frequency component into uh, our Fourier series uh, equation so we have uh, this one which is red and color so you have uh, uh, this one okay and the first frequency component uh, as we add more component now we add two frequency component so if you look here so you know, the representation of the signal it become much better so we, if we add more uh, frequency component so we have three frequency component over here so if you look over here so you we will have a better representation as we add more and more frequency component so you can see over here the signal can it, it be, it become uh, better and better and then become closer and closer to our predict signal which is in white and uh, in, in color right okay so as we add more so it become better representation okay so this is if if we consider rectangular form of uh, 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 rectangular uh, for, uh, signal so if we look another example over here we have sawtooth signal okay so we start at zero over here so let's see over here so have you you what uh, you 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 see over here so we have sawtooth signal in white color so as we add one frequency component so you have just uh, sinusoidal signal over here one frequency component as we add another frequency component so the representation is is getting better so now i add more and more so you can see clearly that we can represent uh, uh, better okay if we add more and more uh, frequency component into the equation okay all right okay so we can have over here uh, for example in uh, the last example over here, we can have rectangular signal over here so we start with zero okay so there are no frequency component so as we add over here more and more 
signal okay more and more frequency component into the equation so we will get a better uh, representation of uh, our periodic signal okay all right so hopefully you understand uh, what is gate phenomenon so let's test it okay so let's test it and then by doing this example okay for example okay so for example number one over here so can you guess which of these two uh, equation will give a better representation is it this one or is it this one okay let guess okay so of course this one we will, will give uh, a better representation of uh, our xt because it's consider more frequency component when compared to this one this one from negative 8 to 8 but this one from negative 50 to 50 so this one will have more frequency component compared to this one so this one will give a better representation of uh, our predict signal xt based on a gip gip phenomenon Okay, let's do uh, example number 2 over here. So, you have xt uh, n0 over 2 plus uh, summation of n equal to 1 to inf uh, 220. Uh, and then, we need to compare with this uh, representation. So, you have xt n0 over 2 and now we have n equal to 1 until 5. Okay, which will give a better representation of our uh, periodic signal xt. Either this one or this one okay can you guess okay of course uh, this one will give you a better representation of our uh, uh, signal xt predict signal xt over here because we have over here it consider until 20 frequency component but this one only five frequency component all right so so let's do the last example over here so if you have xt equal to a naught over 2, n equal to 1 and 15, a n cos n omega naught t plus theta n. And then for this one, you have xt equal to a naught over 2 plus uh, n equal to 1 until 17, a n cos n omega naught t plus theta n. So can you guess which one will give a better representation? Is it this equation over here or this equation? So which will give better representation? So, of course, this will give you a better representation because you have over here, you have 17 uh, frequency component. So, over here, you have 15 frequency component. So, this equation has two extra two frequency component uh, considered in the equation. So, this equation will give uh, a better representation of uh, our predict signal XT over here. Okay, so that is gate phenomenon. Okay, as a conclusion, so as you add more frequency component, more and more frequency component into uh, your equation, uh, the sum of that frequency component will give you m closer and co closer representation of uh, our periodic signal x, x t. That is gate phenomenon. Okay, so uh, hopefully you understand, and then thank. Uh, for watching. Thank you.